Alrighty. Got a little phone holder. Finally. Three hands. My other phone's been a pain in the butt, so I'm going to have to record it on this phone. Um, now, somebody asked me to make a, another financial video, and I thought, well, I can't really make one if I don't have anything new to talk about. But, I do. I want to talk about two different things, actually. The talk of an interest rate rise in the United States and um, a couple of things on that. But first of all, I want to talk about the US dollar and something I found out rather interesting about the petrodollar that explains why the US is still going and hasn't fell flat on its face um, regardless of what a lot of conspiracy theory people are saying and what sort of you would expect to happen. Now, as some of you may know, in 1968 they temporarily closed the gold window. Um, you know, foreign banks and the like couldn't exchange US dollars for gold anymore. It was temporary in 1968, but in 1971 the Nixon shock occurred and uh, Nixon came out and basically said that's it. No more gold standards and shortly thereafter he came out and announced the uh, petrodollar and basically the um, he reached a deal with OPEC whereby OPEC nations, Organisation of Petroleum Exporting Countries, um, he said to them, look, if you use the US dollar for oil trade, we will give you military support. Now, that sort of allowed things like the essential, oh, what's essentially a dictatorship, um, you know, to continue on in Saudi Arabia and Nigeria. There are a few threats to this because not oil, not all oil producing countries will only take the US dollar. Saddam decided he'd start taking Euros and did for about five months and then, well, you know what happened there. He did find, though, that he had 17% more buying power during the time that he was using Euro. Uh, was selling his oil in Euros. Now, <clears throat> you've got places like Venezuela, Iran, and Russia. Don't underestimate Russia's oil producing capacity. You may get the idea, I don't know what they're pumping out in the US media at the moment, that the reason Russia's got issues is because of the sanctions on them. Far from it. The real reason they've got issues is 45% of their GDP come from oil. The reality of the situation is that in Siberia they have either currently in use or drilled the pipes are down and everything but it's just capped um, which is where they put a big steel cap and they later bolt on a big thing they refer to as a gun which has a big spike that runs with compressed air and it's like a giant pipe fitting and the spike is mounted on a 45 degree angle in it and they fire that in with uh, compressed air and it punches through the cap and then woof it goes up the oil goes up through the rest of the oil fitting and off to your refinery or through to your taps and your pipelines Bob Lee used to install those he told me about them um, but anyway the um, they have enough natural gas already being used or 
wells that are already there and they're just capped, ready to go, um, to supply all of Western Europe for 200 years. And this is the stuff they've already got the holes drilled and ready to go for, let alone the stuff they know that's there but they haven't bothered drilling down yet, let alone the stuff they haven't found, you know, they got a lot of oil. Um, particularly plenty of gas, but they've also got heaps of oil as well. And here in Australia we've got heaps of gas and not that much oil. Um, but anyway, there's obviously options that will not take the US dollar. And you say, well, that might be a threat to the US dollar if, you know, people don't necessarily need to use it uh, to buy oil. And they don't. And they haven't really, but if you want a good supply, well, often enough, you've got to, you know, go through some of these OPEC nations. Um, but Iran... It'll <laughs> Iran will take it in whatever you got at the moment. There, <laughs> here they were. Oh, you know we're going to put sanctions on Iran, and the EU decided to uh, stop buying oil from Iran. Oh, that's going to stuff them up. When is it that the West will finally wake up that just by putting sanctions on somebody else doesn't necessarily stifle them? It just stops trade with the West, and you know who comes in? China. You know what happened to Iran? China happened. They got all this oil. That, you know, they'll take pretty much whatever currency you got. But of course, they're getting a whole heap of yuan or rambimbi, as some people sometimes call it, Chinese currency, in exchange for the oil. Over there now, the shops are flooded with cheap Chinese shit. If you get the map out, there is just a little bit of Afghanistan is the only thing that stands in the way of China and Iran. And I got a feeling there may actually be a pipeline or I don't know, it could be rail. I think there might be a pipeline between the two and, you know, protected by the Northern Alliance. They get a little bit of funding out of it. Something like that. Um, but either way, I know for a fact that they're trading oil um, with China quite heavily. And guess who else? India. This will knock your socks off. Did they buy it in rupee? No. Did they buy it in, I don't know what Iran even uses, it's probably dirham or something. No. They buy it directly in gold ounces. So, old Iran's there basically shoveling the gold into the vaults, pretty much. Um, yeah. Not a bad move. Iran is also the world's 14th largest economy. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> there's a bit more to the petrodollar. And, uh, well, you know, these other guys might be a little bit of a threat, but eh, that's a bit by the by. Because there's a lot to do with why the US is still surviving. In this petrodollar deal that I didn't know about and you may not know about either, did you know that part of this OPEC deal, which you probably never heard about, and I didn't until recently, is that these OPEC countries that trade in oil, you know, with US dollars, part of that deal is that a certain amount, I think it may be based on a percentage of total annual trade or percentage of basically barrels of oil that go out or percentage of total, you know, money made from the oil, um, is invested into US bonds. And that is part of the deal. They will not receive military protection to keep their oil producing dictatorship or whatever. Um, they won't receive US military support purely by selling it in US dollars alone. Part of the deal is that they have to buy US government bonds. So what it does is it morphs the bonds market because you've got this like 
constant investors. And it doesn't matter if, you know, it doesn't look like the US is going to be able to afford its 108 to $120 trillion worth of unfunded obligations over the next 10 years. It doesn't matter if it looks like they're not going to afford it. That's not going to really affect the bonds market because you've got these constant buying by OPEC nations of US bonds. And in effect, what it creates is a rigged market because there's like a unnatural demand. And it's sort of like because there's this constant demand for US bonds, regardless of if the US is just spiral out of control, whatever the hell's going on, there's still this constant demand for US bonds. And as a result, it sort of holds the market for US bonds up because, well, they're still being bought, and as a result of them constantly being bought, it's sort of, you know, they hold their value in the eyes of the rest of the market because people are still investing, and they're still being sold. I mean, you look at Italy after the GFC. They said, oh, well, first thing we're going to do is sell bonds. They went and said, okay, rightio, we're going to sort this out, we're going to have a blooming austerity and a bailout, blah, 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 whatever they done. But one of the ones they wanted to do was make, you know, more bonds. So the Italians started writing out all these bonds. And you know what? No one gave a shit and no one bought them. But it's a bit different from the U.S., for the US, you know, bonds, they will get sold. And sort of having these constant buyers sort of bolsters their value, you know. And it's a uh, false demand, but that is why they are still going um, without looking like Greece or indeed Italy, who couldn't sell any bonds or barely any at all to the point it was just laughable. Um, but anyway, that explains something that I never really knew about the petrodollar. But, wait, there's more. All this shenanigan could become a little bit unstable. You see, the old Saudi king died, and he kicked the bucket, everybody knows it, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> the man who came into his place He's about 53 or something. He may only be 53, but he's as sick as a dog as well. He's got blooming diabetes. I think he's got something else as well as diabetes. It might be high blood pressure or something. But his health is atrocious. Um, and <coughs> the trouble is, he's not likely to flame and last any more than seven years or ten years, his health is not good. Um, this is the new guy running Saudi Arabia. Once he dies, it's anyone's guess because there's like so many heirs to the throne after that, it's ridiculous from what I gather. And there could be a shit fight. Do not be surprised at all if the US military gets involved and after this guy dies, it's like panic stations. They're over there in five minutes. They're diplomatic. They've got the military in boats out in the bay ready to flip and unload them all, you know, to put in the air that they want to go in and keep the whole ball rolling. Because if it all turns to shit there, and, you know, by that I mean... Well, you know, there's a bit of a war between the different heirs, or people say, stuff the kingdom altogether. We want to be, you know, a country without 
these kings and, and you can all go to hell and we want democracy and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, they have a bit of a revolution there, a bit of Arab Spring style business. Um, yeah, it could really shake the foundations of the uh, whole OPEC dealio. And um, I'm not saying it'll be the end of them buying it, but if Saudi Arabia stops buying it, and Russia and China make a move, it could be the end. See, in 2008, Russia secretly went over and talked to China, and they said, America's on its hands and knees, everybody knows it. We're willing to finish them off so they stop bossing around the rest of the world, so they stop telling, you know, we, what we want to do is just dump all our US bonds, just sell every single one we've got and probably force all the citizens of Russia too to, you know, just make it illegal to hold US bonds and just go boom, flood the market. And they said to China, do you want to do the same with us and we'll wipe out the US as a world power? Uh, because their bonds will collapse and then they, the government will be broke. And they were going to do this in 2008 and China said, no, we don't want to do it. And then Russia said to them, well, if you're not going to do it, then we won't. However, if things turn to shit with this Saudi king and he dies in a few years' time or whatever, and then Russia and China decide to dump their US bonds, well, yeah, it could be the end of the US position in world power as we know it. Now, on to the interest rate stuff. There's big signs that the US government is <coughs> like the US economy and maybe the government with it is, is barely hanging on because the uh, two are sort of, well it's all very Wall Street linked. How it works out is, let's think about all this. I've had a look at a lot of these US recessions. Most of them, some people claim, like Chris Uane of Truth Never Told, that it's seven year cycles. Every seven years we have a recession. I've had a look at US recessions. They all are between eight and 12 years apart. So they average about 10 years or something like that. Now, they're talking about putting up the interest rate a quarter of a percent. And there's quite a possibility they'll do that. And then the jobless figures come out and they found that more people were in work than expected, according to the really twisted ones, which in work probably means you're getting five hours a week or something stupid like that. But anyway, the, the twisted blooming figures look better than they expected. And I sent the Wall Street, this is a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks back, sent Wall Street into a tailspin because then they were fearful that instead of just raising the interest rate to a quarter of a percent, they may raise it a half percent. And then the panic was on. And, what, and the stock market dropped a few hundred points that day. Um, <laughs> is this for real? You shitting bricks. Over half a percent interest rate rise. You know, in France, when they changed the retirement age in France from 63 to 65, two million people protested on the street. Biggest protest ever in France. Here in Australia, it was already 65 and they moved it up to 67. A few baby boomers had a whinge for the next week, if that. That was about all it invoked. Here in Australia, when the interest rate goes up half a percent, everybody has a bit of a whinge for the next few days. You know, generally speaking, US recessions come every 8 to 12 years. How many years have been since the GFC? It was the end of 2007. We'll call it the start of 2008. It's been a little bit more, basically, than 
Well, let's say it was October 2007. It's been basically what seven and a half years, technically. I think. Yeah, I think exactly seven and a half years since um, the GFC occurred. Well, in that time, in that seven and a half years, there should have been a boom and it should now be ready for another recession. But instead, in those seven years, in seven and a half years, instead of going through another boom and now at a, you know, almost eight year point, hitting another recession, things have been running on zero interest rates and bailouts ever since seven, seven and a half years straight now. And they come out with a half a percent interest rate as a possibility, which they people reckon they won't do it anyway. And oh, they're shitting bricks. How unstable is the US economy? How crummy is it over there if after seven and a half years Talk of raising the interest rate half a percent has everybody rattled. I mean, how flaming, like, it must be really badly broken if talk of only half a percent sends the market into a panic after seven and a half years? We still can't even go up half a percent? Holy smoke! <laughs> There's another graph that Mike Maloney of GoldSilver.com come out with. It's a very bad little graph. Ooh -hoo. It was a graph showing Wall Street big bank earnings over the last, well, probably since the GFC, I think it was, to the current day compared to taxes and revenue taken in by the US government. And you know what? She was bloody perfectly parallel. Bom, 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 bom. There was a gap between them, and that gap probably indicates the manufacturing sector or all the ongoing very sluggish economy that keeps the gap between the two. But the way it looked, the only way it ever goes up, and also when it goes down, it is directly related to Wall Street earnings. That's right. Government taxes and revenue are perfectly parallel with Wall Street earnings. That's a bit scary. Yeah, there's a gap between them, but he showed this graph, and it's just like it is so close, it is scary. It's just the whole way, parallel, and you're thinking, you know, one's a bit above the other, but you just sit there thinking, holy smoke. Essentially, what is funding the US government at the moment is Wall Street, plus your Saudis, Nigerians, yada, 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 buying US bonds. You know, there's some preppers who have said that it isn't a proper collapse, it's a slow collapse, and I'm starting to believe them. You know, I think it might not even be that. I'm, I'm sort of thinking it's just economic stagnation, because that's what economic stagnation is, where nothing sort of goes backwards, but nothing goes ahead either. It just stagnates, because there's no movement, just like stagnant water. There's no movement, lack of oxygen, goes stagnant. So there you go. That's the, uh, my take on the way it's all playing out at the moment, but it's not looking good. It's not looking good. As I said, any big issues with anyone in the OPEC nations, especially if people decide in the OPEC nations to stop using US dollars or some people who were in the OPEC decide to pull out, yeah, they'll be hell to pay. Also, 
just one last point on oil production. Um, back in the early 90s, oil was $10 a barrel. Back then, the Saudis were told to drop production, and they did, but the demand was falling so fast that it didn't make a damn difference. The demand was actually falling quicker than they were dropping the production, um, and as a result, it went right down to $10 a barrel. They had a hell of a good bicker the other day in OPEC, apparently, trying to tell the Saudis to cut production, and they told them, what's the damn point? Last time we've done that, it didn't do anything anyway. We'll just keep production the same and ride it out and see how it goes. But, in effect, what they've done <laughs> is wiped out the U.S. shale oil industry. And because a lot of people were put into that and it was going gangbusters and now it's gone flat on its face, uh, and it has gone flat on its face overnight, um, it's unlikely that people are going to reinvest in the shale oil industry in another few years' time, seeing that it's recently collapsed. Um, and they reckon it's actually secretly part of Saudi Arabia's idea, is to wipe out the U.S. shale oil production because they're competitors. <laughs> and they're not really saying it openly, but that's another part of the... Uh, reason why and once they make shale oil look like something we done that all fell to bits so we won't do it again then basically they've wiped out shale oil for competition for years and years to come until one day maybe people get back into it again but if people get enough of a if they lose enough money now and get spooked enough now they're hoping that people will not bother investing in shale oil again and they would have wiped out one of the competitors something else that's come out of all this <laughs> so there you go